All right, so this is my world record video. I would use the uh, on-screen drawing, but it just it's not working. Um, <clears throat> so at the beginning of the game, before you start up, you want to name it. First, you want to uh, create a save, a new save. Change the text speed, window, color, whatever you want. And then reset the game. That resets the RNG to a known value, which is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then 0. And so... What that does is it gives us a predictable outcome. And then you're just going to, you want to do this on save one so you don't do any extra inputs. And to get the character names you want, you want them to be single characters and takes a total of 20 movements to get to all those characters between all the kids, the food, and the uh, dog and the favorite thing. So that way you're at a known value. And with Tracy's room here, either grab it from the bottom or the side, whichever one you're comfortable with. And um, you can equip the bat inside the room, but I wouldn't because uh, Tracy will move quicker and you need her to do two movements upon leaving. So that's one and then two. And again, she'll move faster. So I equip in the hallway to avoid having her move too quickly for me. So we're going to go ahead and speed ahead. Just kind of just walk as efficiently as you can up to this point. Everything be before this, um, I would say... This cop right here, you want to get past him as fast as possible because he's the only other thing that's going to advance RNG besides the entertainers. And so in this entertainer corner, you want to be up here, somewhere up here. You can go in this little nook here if you want to and just roll off. I personally don't do that because it's a waste of time. The idea is to be as high up inside the entertainer corner as you can, as you can be, <clears throat> so that way you can exit as quickly as possible. And so right here, you want to stay to the side of these bushes. You can roll off of them, but it takes a little bit of extra time. So you want to avoid that. There's a little bit of leniency, but don't like go way out here because you're just gonna you're gonna be in the entertainer center. So I think the line ends like it's I think it's no no it starts like right here. Somewhere in here is where the line starts for the entertainer's corner. And you wanna it, the, the longer you stay in there, the more the RNG is gonna advance. So again, you can just fast forward. And then right here is where Again, you want to roll off these bushes here and go behind. Because once you go behind, since the line's like right here, it'll be throughout this. So there's a much shorter distance to go that way than to go down and right. And that's why we go behind the bushes there. <clears throat> now, um, this cop back here, he can do various things. Going right, I believe, is an AB um, to fix. And now, if you didn't notice the cop, you can wait till you get in front of Tracy and then to AB in front of her. Oops. And um, what she'll do is bump into the top of you and look straight at you. And that's when you know you'll have to do an AB. And otherwise, you can do it like right, uh, right after finishing talking to mom or whatever. I, use, I just wait for Tracy. So you'll see that that happens. And if the cop is going up, you don't have to do anything. If the cop is going down and the inspector is not going down, here, I'll show you the inspector. This dude right here. If the cop goes down and he does not, it's fine. You don't have to do anything. And then I believe if the cop goes left, um, you have to start over. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure there's a fix for it, but it's hard to get. So see how she faced me? <clears throat> That's when I hit my AB. So um, right here, you want to just go down as far as you need to, which is roughly this. You can probably get to these little divots in the floor, but I usually go around here. Then you can either bump this table or go inside this couch here, get lined up with the door. So. All you're going to do is, once you're done talking to Pokey, you hold left and talk to Mom. And then again, the same thing here. It just goes down as far as you need to, which is roughly where I'm at. Because Mom was just going to go left and right, so she'll stay out of your way. And then, uh, so once you walk up to the door and get Pokey, you want to just get to this as quickly as possible, go around the dog. Now, touching the dog will advance um, some value of RNG. I'm not sure which one. But or if it doesn't, it just changes the spawns outside. A lot of the stuff is the same. Um, so there's uh, four possibilities. There's um, maybe five actually. There's uh, there's a dog, which is what we want. A snake, which is fine. You can still do the same inputs. Um, a snake and a crow is also fine. You do the same inputs. Now a dog and a crow, or a dog by itself, but further to the left. You want? I'll show you how to deal with that. Now, naturally, you're going to be going down and left right here, and then doing an AB. So if the dog is far farther to the left, let's go ahead and show you. 
So if he's like right here, you want to go left and then down and then go through and um, then do your AB. And that's the same thing with the crow. If there's a dog and a crow, you got to do that. Now you could just get closer and then down left, but I do it left and then down. It's kind of counterintuitive to what you're planning to do. So you got to get used to that. Make sure to cross this road after doing this AB. The AB is probably from about here till probably around here. You can do an AB. And again, if you don't cross this road and like you just go down and left, you're going to have the wrong seed. All right, so you should get that crow right there and the crow behind this bush. Um, and then right here, you want an AB. I would line up with this uh, crack here, like just right in the center of this wall and do an AB. And then here, from here until rough, like somewhere in this full vicinity, you could do two ABs. It doesn't matter how far apart they are as long as they're within that distance. And then go behind the bushes, and again, you want to roll off of this. And it's okay if you don't. Just try not to go far left. And now right here, this little lip, you have to go above it by at least a pixel, because you need to hit an RNG3 line that's there. And right here, you and you'll get the crow back here. Um, right here, you have to roll off of this at least for a little time, because otherwise you'll get a snake near Picky. Um, and that's, that's the gist of that. And you can go talk to Picky. And then the snake I'm talking about would be like right here. And now you can do, after pick, after talking to Picky, you can do an AB. You have to do an AB from after talking to Picky all the way up until probably around here. Um, it advances RNG to, uh, to a way to where the entertainers do what we want. It's just uh, it's just for safety. So again, I'll, I'll just show you real quick that I did the AB after this. right? Again, you can do it right after talking to Picky if you want to. And then again, you want to hug, um, stay as close to the bushes as you can, and go around the outside. Now you can go on the inside, Doc does it, but there's a chance that uh, Starman will use a Freeze Alpha instead of a Guard. And then from here, where I start my inputs, all the way up until Starman, you do AB, AA, and three Ls. And so that advances RNG, so that way the fight becomes what we want it to be. Straight off the bat, you want to auto-fight. And then um, after he starts using his next uh, shield sigma, you start you get rid of auto fight, and then you either go right right to auto fight or B bash, and then that'll finish off Starman, and it'll produce the same results. And don't do any extra inputs here. Now you can if you want to if you want to do the uh, save and quit strat to get to the barricade, but it's better just to do the single segment if you're capable of doing it. Now I'm sorry if I'm going a bit fast, but I don't have uh, I've only got about an hour to do this, so I want to make sure it gets done. And honestly, again, this stuff you can figure out from, like, Arithium and just watching somebody's video. So I'm just, uh, I'm going over it because it's in here. Now, with this, this uh, dialogue here, right when he says something about Onet, you want to hit um, A and L if you're mashing B and Select. B and Select is faster for mashing. And then after you answered that question, start hitting B and Select, because the next answer needs to be a no. And <clears throat> when you're leaving, you want to be touching, being flush with this uh, black part of the house. If you go down, it, it, go in a directional, a uh, diagonal towards the walls, you'll become flush with the wall. You'll see at least a little bit of blue under him if you're not flush. So you just hit down and right um, and just line the wall. It doesn't matter if you line the wall. You just need to touch it, but it, you may as well just line it because uh, you're just advancing RNG3. So here on the way out, you want to get past these uh, these flowers here and then go down and right. Um, you can go down and right with this road and then go right if you want to, but there's a wall down here, um, right here. This will stop you from going further than you need. So you can, you can hold down and right, and you'll be lined up with this bush to be behind it, which is what you want. And then you got to touch this bush. Or at least get really close to it like I did. Um... Because if you don't, uh, I forget what changes, but it changes the RNG in some way. And then you can either go down, right, and all the way through, and then down, or you can go down, right, right, down. Whichever one you're more comfortable with. I go right down because <clears throat> that's what I'm used to. And bumping there is fine. Uh, this grass patch is where you want to um, go down and left, right here. Go down and left, and then you're going to be rubbing these trees. And then stay on this side of the, the road. I'm pretty sure you can go pretty deep in here, but just try to stay on the line of the road. 
and then again you can you can roll off these trees now down and left inside the middle middle of this road because if you go on the outsides somewhere first off you're probably going to bump but it also doesn't advance rng properly and then here you don't have to be perfect you can actually be kind of above this grass line but to be safe just bump these bushes and then go like once you know you've bumped them go ahead and start moving you don't have to sit there and like make sure you're bumping crap out of it and just hold left and again go down and left on the center of this road and this line on the the road here is uh, a good indicator for when you need to hold left because if you touch this trash bin the rng is off just go up and left into this drugstore and you're gonna withdraw withdraw twenty dollars or forty forty dollars not twenty forty all right um and talk to this dude with the hat with the hairnet or whatever or it's old old man hair i don't know sell the cracked bat and then mash away until you buy the cold remedy say no leave now if you do an extra advancement like the kid um outside of the burger shop if he does some weird movement or if you withdraw fifty dollars i'll show you, i'll show you the path you need to take to fix that so you're going to hold down and right until you get across the street go right then after the stop sign not during this not up below the stop sign after it right here you want to go down and right and then go down to this to this other tree and then go down and right again now if you did advance like by getting 50 dollars of the kids off you want to just hold down and right and you'll go through these bushes instead and then you go down and then go through here um again this is the same thing you're just going to get behind here down and right and then in front of the around in front of the door you want to go down and right again and then once you get behind this fence it doesn't matter if you touch it's up to you if you want to do that you just you start going right and then it doesn't matter if you roll off of this just try to stay close stay on the left side of the sidewalk because that's actually important and then three l's right here now you you can be either on the sidewalk or on the road it doesn't matter it's kind of better to be on the sidewalk because you'll get moved by the uh, by the stop sign that happens later on. So that way it's a really good indicator of how far you are um, to get ready to hold down and left. So three L's here. A down, down, B right here. And then once you get past the stop sign, while you're holding down and left, do two ABs. And do not touch this bush. If you touch this bush, it will throw off the RNG. I got close, but I didn't touch it. And since it's so slow, it's really easy to roll off of that. Go down and right at this grass patch. Now, there are several ways you can do this area. It's up to you, whatever you're feeling comfortable with. I do A down down B, L, and then A, B. You'll see. A down down B. And then I do L here. Now, Cerium will just walk down and left, but you have to walk at a precise moment to avoid any antoid spawning. And that's why I don't like it. And then I do an A, B here. And when he does his down left, he does an AB here as well. And um, I'm not sure what the pathing is. I think he might go. I think he might just go straight down. I'm not sure. And then he, um, and then you go. Then you go down and left here. Go on these trees. Go far left. Go down and left, and you exit. Uh, Sirium again with with just the walking, doing the AB. Or I do it. He'll do an AB on this road. And then there's a mushroom behind this tree right here. On mine. So um, from here, you just want to get to the uh, Burglin Park as fast as possible, which is behind this river. And then you go down and through here. Now, you can rub off of this tree. It's not the easiest thing in the world sometimes, like when you're first learning it, believe it or not. Um, and then go down here, talk to this dude. Make sure to buy the fruit juice first, which is up, up. And then you buy the skip sandwich. Be at least for me, it's because that way I hit up and A when I use the skip sandwich. And, I, and um, it just makes it easier. So you go through here and you go down to the line on this road. And then at this line, you go straight down. Um, there are several cliffs you can use, but this is the one I'm using in my, in my PB. Sometimes you go to spawns here. Uh, this is not entirely preventable. So um, that particular spawn obviously is fine. You can just go down and left early. And then with this, you have to be two pixels away from this wall, at least, before you can actually wedge yourself in here. And uh, so if you are two pixels away, I believe it's down and right and then down. And if you don't go in, you can try again. Now, we just kind of just go crazy on the controller, go down and left, down, right, down and down and stuff. And I think I meant down and right and then down to get stuck.
So then you get stuck. You'll you'll see that you get wedged in here. Um, now this one's pretty quick. So when Ness has his foot on this cliff, that's when you know you're in. It's very obvious. Um, so from here you want to hit left and then down until you get through. Now you can either tap or roll your finger. I roll my finger. I just like very briefly t touch the left button to hit down again. And just keep rolling my finger off on there. And uh, eventually get through. And then go right. This, is, this particular cliff is a little bit slower than the other ones. But the faster you get in, the more um, time you're saving. This cliff right here and the one just to the upper left doesn't advance RNG. So it's theoretically possible to get a graveyard manipulation in here. But the thing is, the the, <clears throat> the guy out in front of, of Berglund Park, the muscle man, he's so random, it's almost impossible to do. You'd have to come up with like five backups. All right. <clears throat> so here, again, you, you can only advance RNG if you go too far right. And same thing when popping out. If you go too far right, you'll advance RNG. But again, that doesn't really matter for this. So what we want is Ness to be just flush with the bottom of this uh, tree. You see how the shadow is exactly on line with, um, with, uh, with the shadow of this tree? That's what you want. If he's a pixel off, it'll, um, he'll walk down instead of up. That's all you need. Oh, shit. That's all you need to do. And then from here, you use a skip sandwich. Now, you can try to wedge yourself in here by going left and up and right like crazy, like Sirium does. But I tap left, wait until I get around here, and then I go up, and then right, up, right, until I get through. And then it's very, it's it's pretty easy to get stuck, because sometimes you get, it looks like you do it right, but you'll get stuck right here. And um, if that happens, you kind of have to tap down for like a pixel, and then go left, up, right, and keep trying to do that until you get through. As long as you're inside this cliff, you can make it through. And enter the tunnel, you can enter at the bottom of the tunnel. I tap B there. For luck it seems like 90 percent of the time it's worked for me to not get this eight percent spawn that's outside of this tunnel um it's more common than you'd expect for an eight percent and there'll be spawns anywhere from here like behind the house like all in that area there could be spawns grab the skip sandwich um now you can go through up up through this area right here but it's a pain in the butt so i go through bottom and then you want to go up and around here you can just walk straight up on this house and you'll walk by You'll walk by the bushes too, and then we're gonna go up and right, up and left uh, behind the hotel. Um, sometimes there's spawns there, obviously, and this is the fastest route to get here. And now, when you get behind here, you want to go up uh, behind here because there's less spawns and it's safer. And then right here, you can go down and left between these uh, these stones here, and as long as you at least rub off of this gravestone. There's a spawn skip for, I don't know which one it is up here, but most of the time you'll get through without anything there. And you don't have to go down to the road like I did. I thought I had to before, but you don't. You can go anywhere from the from the stone to the, to the road, and it'll despawn. And now you want to kind of dip in here, inside that little nook here, because sometimes there's spawns, oh, there's a lot of spawns here sometimes, but um, it's so that way you have enough time to react and no fly will get you. Because if you're like up here, you're probably going to get snagged by a fly if there is one, or a ghost. And then you just despawn a little bit. And so on the way out, it's almost always free. So just make your way out. Okay, so now this is not important. This is all stuff that you don't need to really know. You just need to know how to walk there. All right, so we're fast forwarding some more. Okay, we're going to talk to Max. Get the key, do the thing, get the broken key machine. And now what we only want the pop gun. The home set is completely useless for us. All right. So then we go out, we go to the shop. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sell the pop gun first, because it's up in A, sell the broken spray can, up in A, and then the big bottle rocket, you just mash A. So that's the most efficient way to sell these things. All right, now when we go to buy, go up three times. If you buy the skip sandwich on your first buy, your run's over. You cannot buy this sandwich. Um, if you sell it, you won't have enough money for another skip sandwich anyway. And uh, if you've already sold your broken spray can, you can't make a defense spray to fix that. Now you can also go back, go all the way down to where Tessie is, make a defense spray, um, come up, and somewhere in the middle there's a spawn plate. And if you get a if you get a goat, try to get red swirled and get yourself killed so you can go back to to the shop and buy some more. 
You can get four skip sandwiches that way. So we're going to get two. And uh, if you do save, um, save the game and have to reload, you reload the game. If you do an L right here, let me, let me just go ahead and zoom in. You do an L right here, and then you go straight left and do an AB around here, you'll get a crow. And this crow will move with you. It'll go left with you. So you're going to want to move up and left while, while you see the crow. Let's go ahead and get past this. So this is basically just me despawning. All right, and you kind of stutter depending on what it is because sometimes it'll move left and you can make it despawn itself. So I had some bad luck here. So this crow, it'll, it'll be going this way. It'll be ahead of you. So don't go straight left. Go up and left a little bit. Once you get around here, you start going down. Or actually, I'd probably go out here and start going down and left, and the crow will get stuck on the trees or this wall up here. All right, so with this cliff, it's very particular. Uh, it's very easy to do. So you want to walk into this by holding left. And once you get to that down to the bottom of this cliff, right in this little corner, see I'm doing it, I'm doing it up and left and left. And I'm looking for some movement from Jeff. Alright, so you see how he moved a little bit? Let's go ahead and rewind a little bit. That's a little bit too much. That's fine. Alright, let's uh, zoom in. And watch for the movement. It should be on the next one. See that little movement? Now, if I uh, go up, you notice how I went to move up and I couldn't move? You have to try again. Okay? If, um, if you can't move, you can't do it. I mean, you can get past that little wall and stay inside the wall here, inside this little cliff, because we're kind of getting a sub-pixel movement, so that way we're kind of wedged in a little bit. Um, if you don't move... You don't want to do it because it's almost impossible to get through with that one. And now there's only two possibilities. Either you move or you don't. So I moved here. So I'm just tapping up to see if I can go past this little wall. And then I hold left until I get down to this point. And now you'll see that Jeff's shadow is right on top of the grass. And that's what you want to see. And so that's when you start using your skip sandwich here. You want to do like smaller movements. Um, of up and left for like the first like five movements, maybe six or seven. It's just to make sure that the uh, the lip here, there's a lip that can happen that's an invisible wall. It's not guaranteed with this setup, so you have to get into the cliff a little bit before it will appear for you. And then you do longer movements, do rhythmic long movements. So so you just like uh, it's hard it's hard to explain. So I'll, hopefully it sounds alright for here. So I'm putting in the volume here. So I did a little bit of wonky tapping, but that's generally the rhythm you want. Um, the longer the movements, the more you're going to get through that cliff and the faster you'll get in. So that one, I think, was an average one. You can tell from where the skip sandwich stops. So right here is about an average skip sandwich um, uh, cliff, right? So it's just above average. And the best one is right here. This is as far as you can get with your skip sandwich. So that if you got that one, you're probably ahead by like a few seconds at least. Because not only did you get through the cliff faster, you got further space to run. Now getting behind trees with a skip sandwich is kind of difficult. So you might get snagged on stuff. Now you can actually just go around the tree and go under if you want to. But I go through the middle. And then that's the path you take to get to in front of Andamets. Now this is also very specific. Um, right here, here, I'll zoom in again. So right here, you want this little little line here to be, be a pixel away from Jeff's shoulder. All right. All right, you'll see right here that it's touching his shoulder. All right, we don't want that. So I'm going to go back and try again uh, and see how the, this is actually two pixels away. You don't want that either. Now, if it, if um, this line is next to Jeff's neck, you actually kind of want to see that because uh, it gives you a guarantee. If you hold up and left, you'll move up a pixel. It'll give you a guarantee if you get the setup before going too far left. It'll give you a guarantee through this wall. 
So I'm, you just got to keep trying and you got to get this particular amount of distance between you and the wall. Now, I didn't get that particular setup. I wouldn't go for it. It would not be my, um, my main attraction to this wall because you don't want to spend too much time here. It's, it's just going to be wasting time. You may as well just take the 50, 50 or whatever percentage it is. It's a lot lower than if you get that up and left pixel movement by having that, that line next to Jeff's neck rather than his shoulder like it is. So again, that's right next to his shoulder. Okay. It'll be right inside that little crease if it's, if it's too, uh, this line is too high. All right. So right here, you use the skip sandwich from here. You do, you tap right, tap left, and then go up and you'll go right through. I do it really fast. So you won't see that. And then here, you want to talk to Ananuts, get through his text, and save anywhere on the left side of this phone. Now, the lower you are, the, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. You have to talk to Ananuts after you reload the game. And if you're on the right side of him, you got to get around to him really fast. So it's better to save up a little bit higher. So that way you can just go talk to him and then just go right past him. Um, Ananuts is most likely not going to walk into you, so you have to walk to him. It doesn't matter. Like, as long as you get out of there fast enough, you're fine. All right. So again, we'll get to the save. All right. So I'm trying to save right here. That's a fine spot to save. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and just uh, back it up a couple. All right. So I just want to show you where I saved. You can get in this particular spot here if you need to, but you really don't. Anywhere on this side of the phone is fine. All right. So we'll go ahead and reload the game. So we save and quit, and then we reload the game. Again, that's part of the reason why we have it on the first save file. Talk to Anna Nuts and then get into the Skyrunner. And uh, make sure to hit A or L until that thing starts shaking. Once it starts shaking, you're going to take off. All right, so now we're, uh, we're going to be doing this for about 10 minutes flying here. So this guy right here, on the second time you pass him, is what you're looking for. So we're going to fast forward to that point. And back up. So right here, if he's right next to the house, right here, that means you have to do A, B, A down, B. You'll understand that in a minute. If he's down here, A, B, A, B. Um, people will check for his movement. Like, if he's up by the house, he goes down. And if he's here, he goes right, right. There's no point in checking for that. Just check where he's placed. Because he only has two different variables. All right, so you can hit A and L to be safe, because you need to say yes to Jeff. And uh, it doesn't matter how you walk through this room as long as you're not backtracking or going up and down or something. You can go straight straight right and then go up to the door. It's, it's all the same. Um, you want to make sure to get this door is locked message. Go to goods and then go left to Jeff's inventory. Bad key machine. Right when you get through the door, hit L. And then at the top of the stairs up here, you do whatever's based on what the dude was doing outside. So either A, B, A, B or A, B, A, down, B. And when you come outside, the pumpkin dude should be here. If he's not, you got it wrong. So you're going to do two AAs, three Ls, and an A down down B. And, hold, and you have to do this while holding left the entire time. If you don't hold left, for, and if like you even pause for almost like a few frames, it'll throw, throw off the RNG because you'll get attacked at a different position. AA, three Ls, A down down B. My controller is messing up the time. That's why it took me so long. So this is the fight you're going to get. So you want to do left, left, down, defend, bash the uh, ghost. So that's automatically the first position. And then spy on the ghost. All right, so he's going to spy before Paula dies. And then right when Paula dies, go right, right, auto fight, and immediately cancel this auto fight. Once it cancels, mash A and L so you can bash the ghost. All right. And now after this turn, what we're going to do, again, this is something you, get, you can do differently based on how easy it is. First off, once you do that bash, mash B and L. So that way, once you get to the other menu, like what happened to me, if you're going to overmash, you're going to overmash a B. So we need is a B advances by two, an A advances by one, directionals usually advance by one. Okay, so if, you hit, if you're hitting L and A too fast, and you manage to bash, you're going to ruin the RNG. So hitting B is a lot safer. So here you can either do AB, which is three inputs, or 
right B, down B, left B, it doesn't really matter as long as whatever's comfortable for you to make three inputs. So we need to do three ABs and five Bs, and then we defend. And you see I did four there, but because again I overmatched, so I already did one of the Bs. It doesn't matter the order in which you do these. So you're going to hit for 18, and then you're going to sneeze and take four damage. And then you just run away. Left, down, run away. Now you're going to be holding right during this transition. You don't... It actually doesn't really matter that much, but you want to be holding right. Um, and you want to get past at least up to this ladder, because there's an RNG3 line here that you need to pass. And when this ghost gets somewhere within this vicinity below you is when you want to go down the ladder. Now... Um, if he, if the ghost is right below you, you can immediately walk off this ladder. But pretty much any setup that's below Ness, you can walk down to the wall, know that you touch the wall, and then go straight left and touch these stairs. Um, pretty much any setup will get you there. If you do that, if you walk to the wall. See, I was like on the last pixel when I did this. So right when that message happens, hold up and right. Get to roughly here. Um, probably a little bit higher than this. And then once you hear the sound transition to Summers, um, you'll hear it here, right here. Oh, hold on. That music, you can use the sound stun. So right goods, enter in S's inventory, right sound stun. And then when you get to around here on this table, you want to go into your goods. Again, go into Ness, up A, and mash it until you're done with the skip sandwich. Alright, get in this door. See, so I had to move slightly because I was a little low. And that's totally fine. So you're going to wait at the bottom of these steps. And you're waiting for this ghost to get past Jeff. Okay. You see how uh, he went just past him? Let's go again. Because I didn't realize how low the ghost was. Normally the ghost is a little bit higher than that. So you're anticipating when the ghost gets on Jeff. And then you're anticipating when to move. Do not anticipate when to move when the ghost is on top of Jeff. Because when you do, you'll go too early. So you kind of want like a, roughly a quarter to a half of the ghost to the right side of Jeff before you go right. You'll be able to see. It's, it's harder to see when you're watching it like this. Go down and left and go into this little divot here. Right when you get into this blue area, you want to use the, the can of fruit juice. Again, all, this, all these movements are very specific. You cannot do anything extra. And sometimes you can, but you need to know what changed. Like, even knowing the amount of inputs doesn't necessarily matter, because if I did two extra inputs before going here, I can't just reduce two, because it might have changed it differently, um, depending on where you're doing it. So. so right when you hear that sound, you're in Lumine Hall. And you're going to um, use your soundstone there, fall in this hole. Don't go past the hole. You'll advance RNG3. So once you get down here and get into the underworld, let's go ahead and back up one more time. All right, so we're going to go to PSI menu and then go, go into it twice. But when you go into the PSI menu, either on the first or the second one, it does not matter. Go in there, push right or left or whatever just to advance RNG. It'll advance by two. Back out, go back in, go back out, out again. And you'll be here and you just wait to die. Now, again, it advances two. So if you happen to forget that phantom input, at the main menu, do a couple a couple movements like right, right, down, down, whatever. As long as you advance those two points. So then after you die, say yes. You're going to be back here. Up and right. Again, it doesn't matter how you walk in here as long as you get to the door. Um, what that did, going to the psychic menu, cut out a bunch of inputs that were in this hallway. So you can either just do this... Um, like just right in front of the zombie, right next to the gravestone. It's pretty lenient, but um, the further right you are, the more you have to wait. So you want to go as far left as you can. So you're going to do um, two AAs and then an A up A, which is a check. And you get in this fight with the zombie. I moved a little bit right because I was too far to the gravestone. If Ness's, the bill of Ness's hat is touching this gravestone, you're too far left, and the zombie will get stuck. So right, uh, left, left, down, defend, and then you're going to do an A, B, defend, or again, right, B, defend, same thing. 
and then you're going to run away. Left down, defend, run away. And you're going to be holding right again during this transition. Otherwise, you will be way late. So you want to go as far right as you can, which is like to the very right side of this uh, ladder here, to enter. All right, and then you go down, all the way down to the wall. And the second you know that you touch this wall, like your brain has registered it, lift your finger from your D-pad and then go left. Don't roll it. You'll go too soon. You'll go to yeah, you'll go too soon, like a pixel too soon. So lift your finger, go to the left. It, it just as quickly as you can. It doesn't really matter as long as you're saving that little little tiny frame. And you'll get right on the steps. You almost it's like a guarantee you're gonna get through here. Now anywhere from after that message all the way up until roughly this ladder, use the cold net remedy on Ness. So that way he doesn't die. So we're gonna go ahead and skip forward. We're gonna hold up and right this entire time. And there's nine transitions. The ninth transition is the one you want to get through, and I'll let you listen to the music. It's right after Delong. It's a very long section of Delong. Okay. Here, Delong. That's the sound you want to hear when you're using your soundstone. Now, there are various ways to get through this door, but I go up to this uh, bed here and then go straight right. If you miss the door, you're screwed. So again, go down cardinally, go right and roll off of this. And this guy will move left. Um, right when you touch the pink area, hit AB. And then go here. And you want to go straight up. You can roll off of this. That's fine. And then here, again, you can also roll off of this, this part here. But um, where I'm doing this AA is like directly lined up with these teeth. You're actually a lot higher than you think. So AA here. Go all the way right. AA in front of this purple thing. And then right when you get lined up with this wall, go straight up. Hold up. A up A in this teeth, uh, this tooth, this teeth, and that tooth. And then uh, right when you get to this slant here, you want to do an L. Right in front of the present, A, B, A, A. And then here, you can do this from this tooth, like probably in this area. I go around here to do my A up A, because that way I can just hold down when I'm done. You can do it here, but it's easier for me to do it here. So A up A. Go down. Now you got about probably within this entire section to do an A down down B. And then this wall is very peculiar. So you can't just hold down and slide off of it. You can hold down for like a few seconds, like a, just, just till you start sliding, and then hold down and right, because you'll get stuck somewhere on this. And then go, then just hold right here. Right when you get to the, on the bottom here, you do an A down down B. And then before you get to this turn, you want to do A, B, A down B. And then before you get to this turn, you do A, B, A down B. And then you hold left to go on this on this wall. You can hold up on this wall, too. Uh, you're not going to get snagged unless you do something weird. And then an A, A, probably within this section here. I do it on the second tooth. And then an A down B, probably within this section here. I do it on this tooth, A down B. Or I guess I did it on that tooth. Um, so A down B there. And you'll enter here. The far right. I touch it from the top because for me, I believe it's more consistent. So here, you want to roll off this wall. If you don't, you'll um, see the point of that is to be as high as you can be because there's literally one pixel of freedom here. Actually, no freedom. I guess I guess that is freedom. Um, if you move down even a pixel, you'll mess up mess this up because you'll get warped back to where you went out of bounds and threed. Uh, once you get on the same line as where you've gone out of bounds, it'll it'll bring you back over there. So that's why we're rolling off of that wall. Now, right in this section here. Okay, let's zoom in on this. So right in this, uh, right here, this section here, you want to do an A down, down, B. Now, if you did it wrong, um, the Kraken won't be down to the bottom here. You'll be like to the right, and that means you did it too early. So within this section, this like this little dark section and this little white section here, you can roll off of this wall. You can go up and right, I believe, um, whichever one you're more comfortable with. But just make sure to just stay as close to this wall as you can. And then here, okay, we'll zoom in. You want Ness's head roughly lined up with the top, like his top of his head. Be roughly lined up with that spike here. And if you want, you can use this as reference. As to when his entire head gets beyond this spot here, you have to go left. 
again, top of his head here or his entire head past this little curve. It's very precise because if you go too early, um, this next Kraken is going to be farther to the right. You can still get past him, but then the other Kraken is going to be going right. So if, if that happens, that means you turn too early here. So you want to go hold left here. And now right when Ness starts moving up a little bit, that's when I know I can go up. You can go, you can still go a bit to the right and rub off of this pillar. That's totally fine. But I wait until here and, and then um, I kind of roll off of that a little bit. So you're going to see the Kraken up here. Um, again, you're going to do kind of the same thing. You're going to have Ness's head uh, lined up with the, the spike here. But it, once you see most of the Kraken, you'll know when you can, when you can go anyway. All right, so you see the little puddle here, right? You want to see at least some of the Kraken before you start turning left, like about that much. And then you turn left. Oh, wait, like I'm zooming in. All right, so you want to see about that much of the Kraken before you move left, okay? And then this dude should be moving left. Now, if you go too early on this left here, the Kraken, after this AB that's right here, okay, this Kraken's going to go down and left. That means you move too early going through here. Okay? The Kraken will go down and left. And if you and if you did it right, he's gonna go up and left. So um right when you get here, you do A down B. You're kind of responding to his movements, but you just just make sure you just do it here. Okay, the point of this the whole manipulation is to respond to the movements of the Kraken. So it's more of a technical thing that you'd get into. So don't worry about that. But just do the A down B here. And they go up and left. So he's going up and left, and he's going to go left, and then up and left. Now, if he does one more movement, that means you are, um, I believe you're, you're one advancement ahead. Okay? Now, this is kind of an advanced way of doing this. Um, but you can avoid doing what I'm going to do by doing three ABs. Let's see. It would be eight, nine. Yeah. So you can do three ABs. Um, to do this, or you can go into the psychic menu, leave the psychic menu, stay in the main menu, and then go straight to goods. So yeah, it's three ABs, or that. So whichever one you're more comfortable with. So I go in the psychic menu, out, go back to the main menu, go here. So going in and out of the psychic menu is eight inputs. Going back up to talk is nine. So um, I'm not counting opening the menu because that also is an input. But we're always going to do that no matter what. So you can either do three ABs, go into the menu, go to goods, or you can do that and go to goods and go left to Jeff's inventory. Now, if you move up and left, okay, and the Kraken um, doesn't move like, I think it's in this area, he's up here and then aggros you. Um, if he aggros you from up here, that means you got to go down, down to the secret herb. If he aggros you from down here, you have to do up to the secret herb. Because you'll be one advancement ahead. And give it to Ness. And then go into his goods. Use it on Paula. And now, once you've used it on Paula, keep mashing L. Don't don't touch A, B, or select. Because um, this will... You might advance the RNG, and you want to talk straight to Manny Manny right now. And it, it prevents you from screwing that up. So here you're going to do Defend Prey. And the next turn, you're going to do two Bs, defend and bash. B, B, defend, bash. And then Paul is going to die. Okay, now the PSI menu. Everybody does, uh, Sirium does this differently. I think he does four inputs or three. I'm not really sure. I think it might be four inputs in the PSI menu. So I'm going to go down to the PSI menu. And now we're going to hit A on this offense menu five times. Five. Um, you can watch Sirium's video or something if you want to do it four times. It gives you a little bit more leniency, but I do it five times here. Then you go to the PSI menu with Recover and use Life Up four times. Now back out. And then right when you get to the main menu, hit B again. And then Bash. So you don't want to hit Up because you'll be one advancement behind. Now you could do that and go to Bash and then do a, a Phantom Input, which means hitting left or right. And um, while you're targeting an enemy, you won't hear anything, but you'll see them flash. Like, it'll reset their target flash thing. And uh, that means you advance. That would be two. But hitting B is a lot faster and easier. So, again, uh, PSI menu, five offense, 
War Life up, back to the main menu, hit B one more time, and then bash. And then Nightmare will kill himself. So we're going to fast forward through this. This is like three minutes of mashing. There's no point in this. You're not going to do anything differently. So when you teleport into Saturn Valley, you're going to be buffering up and right. Okay? And I think from Sirium's video, I've kind of figured out that there is um, some difference in what he's doing, which... which uh, I guess is why he's been off on RNG. I didn't realize this was a thing. I thought it was simply touching this rock is bad. So I would at least, I would probably do this distance. Just make sure Ness's hat is like at best like aligned with this rock at the bottom. So I go all the way down, all the way right until I get below this rock. And then I go up and right. And Sirian has been doing up and right like around here. And I think he, I think there must be an RNG3 advancement here somewhere. So then you go up to the right side of Andonuts and make sure to to look at him before talking to him. Do it quickly. But if you're not looking to, at him, even if you're exactly next to him, you'll talk to Mr. Saturn. So you have to look at him. And uh, hit L to talk to him. And then right when he starts saying someone resembling a pig, um, that that's your cue to know that the dialogue's going to end. And then stole the device. Hold up. Get into this machine. Then you want to mash A and L to make sure you say yes to him. And once he says something about please check out, check them out before you leave, again, get ready for the prompt to end this. So this is the last test message. So you want to go down, go to the right between these dudes, and go straight down. Mr. Seven, go down. You want to go into this little divot here. Go right, and then touch that, and then go down. You can roll, you can stu get stuck here, it doesn't matter. You want to kind of roll off of this wall to know that you can go down. All right. And again, you want to touch this wall. You want to make sure you know you touched it and then go left. Now go all the way left. Um, so I think that was the issue Sirian was having. So I, I noticed that um, he still got the same roach doing doing this the way I do. But he's been rolling all the way from like right here into the into the cave and it's been the same. So I believe anywhere within here, as long as you get into the cave, rolling, it doesn't matter. And if you're doing it right, you'll get the roach right here. If you're advanced too far, Sirium's roach is right here. And, and this is only speculation because I haven't tested this. But more than likely, he's... Hold on. Okay. Um, more than likely, he's one advancement ahead. Okay? With the roach being here. So, I, I haven't tested this. I don't think I have a safe state to test it, so I'm not going to right now. Um, I may clarify later on in like the description or something. So, if you want to fix that, if that is the case, that you have advanced RNG one time, okay, this will make it more difficult. All right. So, we're going to go down a little bit and then go right, and we're going to roll off of this, and we want to get here because there's an RNG3 advancement here. Then we're going to touch, um, so again, RNG3 advancement here. We're going to touch this. Okay, do not touch this little lip right here, because that'll advance RNG. All right, so you kind of want to get flush with this side of the wall. When you go down, if you're not touching the, uh, the wall right here, you want to hold down and right to get flush with it. You have to be flush. Don't hold down and left, because again, you can advance RNG doing that. So down and right, if going straight down didn't get you flush. Okay, I did it weird, so I didn't do that. Um, I didn't realize I wasn't going to do it. So, uh, hold on a sec. I didn't mean to do that. All right. So anywhere you want to be at least probably halfway uh, Nessa's shadow, at least, mm, yeah, probably roughly here. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to do Okay, I went, I went further ahead a little bit. I'm thinking more for safety. But I would say at least half this grass patch, but do not let Ness's shadow go beyond this grass patch before you start doing this menu. You can walk around and readjust yourself in here. It's totally fine. You're not gonna you're not advancing any RNG at all. And it's like it's you've got basically a bubble in here. You don't have to worry about anything. So you can take your time to set this up. So um once you get to the setup area, which is where basically where I'm at, um you go into your menu, go into goods. Go to Paul's inventory by going right, drop her teddy bear, 
and then go straight down to the PSI menu, down left or left down. And then go into Ness's uh, menu, go up and right or up and left, whatever it takes to get to teleport beta. And then go to on it and just let it go. You should teleport to the left. And again, uh, real quick, I don't think I touched down on that. If you have the other roach that Syrian's been getting, I would just touch this and then just kind of go down most of the way and then go right. And then try to adjust yourself while you're inside this little center area. You should go left. Again, because that's the other RNG advancement that we got earlier that we don't want. Because that roach in there doesn't necessarily matter. So we're going left. You're going to hold right. And then um, my controller is messing up. I didn't plan to go on the road here, but it's totally fine. You'd be anywhere from where I'm walking to the left side of the sidewalk here. And you can roll off this building. You could decide not to. It doesn't matter. You want to be next to the building, though. Hit AA here. So we're going up and right. And there's an RNG line that we're hitting. That's why I'm going up and right. You want to touch this house. And then go left. Touch that bush. Do not go to the left here. Because that will advance RNG. Do not, do not touch this house. And then go touch this bush. And go left and up. And do that quickly. Because, again, you may advance RNG. Pretty, pretty easily right here. So then once you get past this tree, you can do A, B, A, B, going up and left. You can go all the way up to this bush to be safe if you want to, and do the A, B, A, B in front of this, and then go right. And when you're doing this up and left, do not go past this bush. You can go a little bit lower. That's totally fine. But if you want to be safe, just go straight up to the bush, A, B, A, B, go right. You see, you notice how I'm not higher than the bush? I'm not much higher, I should say. Yeah, so I'm I'm basically actually if I was bumping into it, that's about where my head would be, is like right in that line. So it's a little riskier doing it this way, but if you want to, you just bump this A B A B. And then right here, in this little section right here, it's very specific. Do an A B, and either walk away to the right or just go up and right. Doesn't matter. And you didn't see it because I paused on it, so there was an A B right there. And then go behind this bush, go up and right. And then right when you get around here, when Ness's hat is uh, showing here, or his head, go, into the, go up, up into the PSI menu. Not down, up, up, because you need that extra input. And then exit the PSI menu, exit the menu, hold left. And now you cannot go past this bush. Once you get lined up with the, with the left side of this bush, hold down. Okay? If you go, if you don't go far enough, or you go too far, you'll advance RNG too much. It's pretty, it's actually precise, but it's actually, it's not really that hard to do. And again, bump into this until you know you bumped, and go left. And then around the end of this grass patch, you want to hold up and left. Bumping should not matter. I would try not to. And then go behind here. Do not go up and left until you get past this grass patch. You don't you'll advance rng you don't want that past the grass patch up and left and you can kind of walk however you want here um rolling off of this is, is not important but i would rolling off of this is important you want to go straight left and when you get to here or just past the grass patch go up and left and now here you can you can just hold up and left if you want to it doesn't matter just get all the way to the side of the bush here now if there's a butterfly right here you want to A, B from, from here to, the, to around the flowers. You want to hit A, B. So like right where Pooh's standing to the flowers, you want to hit A, B if there's a butterfly to the left. These dudes are always going to be behind here. Roll off of this and go up. And there's no spawns. And that's the end of that. And that's the done with that manip. Um, what I do for teleporting is I get to stand on that grass patch and then teleport beta to Saturn Valley. I'm going to give them the meteorite piece. Pass forward. Um, so you only have to touch like above this grass patch to trigger the event. And again, hit A and L to the end of nuts to make sure to say yes to everything. And you're going to save here and quit. Save and reset. All right. Go back in. And you want it to do an a a five L's here before getting beyond this little corner here. Let's do five L's. You can do them anywhere within this area. Again, my L button was messing up. That's why it took me so long. 
A, B right here. And now this is, um, I'm pretty sure you can stand still, but from this line up until this line, you have to do four A, Bs within this little section. Okay. And then you want to scale this. You want to rub off this. And once you get to this little peak here, then you can hold up and right. So up and right, roll off of this. This little peak, up and right, roll off of that. And I screwed that up, obviously. And then just hold right, A, B at this little peak here. And then once you get to this peak, like just past it, you want to hold up and right so you don't bump. And bumping really doesn't matter that much, but it's a lot smoother to do it that way. And then AA when you're roughly in this line. And then at this little spot here, like right when you're next to it or just a little bit past it, A up A, L. And then within this little area right here, this spike and this spike, you do an A, uh, you do an a up A. And then again, bump this, bump it until you know you bumped it, and then do two ABs. Then go left, go all the way up. And then you, you slide up, you slide on this for like a brief moment. And then you go right, and you're going to roll off of this, start holding down and right, and be directly in line with this. Um, you have to do this particular part fast because there's spawns off screen. So you want to make sure to be lined up and get in there. <clears throat> all right so right here you do three ab's you get a crack in right here you get stuck there um right around here you do go into goods go into paul's goods use the bread roll on ness and after this you want to go left just a little bit do a down down b now you don't want to roll too much on this so you want to you want to make sure you're like almost lined up with the kraken you don't necessarily he can move but you don't necessarily want him to um i think he could probably move probably to about this line and it'll be okay um if he moves beyond that you'll have to be on a different rng seed so i move up a little bit to make sure i don't roll too much and then for this <clears throat> you're going to do an ab defend defend spy defend and then on the next turn, you're going to go B and then run away. You're going to get the gutsy bat, B, run away. And then after this battle, um, I'm doing the L's really fast here because um, I'm so used to doing it this way. But if you end up being further back, um, don't hit L right away. Um, I would make sure you see at least this much of the globe before hitting L because if you do it too early, you'll get a butterfly. Um, you can wait until after this little spire here if you want to you can wait all the way up until you actually reach it and do two l's and make sure to enter the right side of this directly and then at this spike go into goods go left left or right right i don't believe it matters to jeff's inventory and then go a and then enter his inventory go up give the gutsy bet to ness and then leave the menu and then take a step a down B. And then on this wall you do three A Bs. It doesn't matter. You can you can stop and do these. Personally, I wouldn't I don't recommend stopping because it's a lot of the times it can screw you up. And then you want to get to the to the peak of here, of this little spike here. Um, and then go straight up. This is very this is very specific. You got some leniency with it, but you can you can take your time lining yourself up. Go straight up. And then right here, you go up and right. Um, do not roll off this left wall. It'll advance RNG. Anywhere on the right side is fine. As long as you don't roll, you're fine. Uh, and uh, on the left side at all. So, okay, on this here, I'm pretty sure you can equip this anywhere, and you can even do the inputs anywhere. But just do it this way, just for consistency's sake. Equip the Gutsy Bet to Ness, and leave the menu. And you want to pay attention to how I'm walking. Because there are RNG three triggers everywhere. You don't want to advance too much because if you have wonky walking, you're going to advance the RNG incorrectly. Even if you did everything right, if you get the RNG three off by even one, you will screw up the manipulation. So pay attention to how I'm walking and practice this walk. This is important. So once you get up here, a, uh, do three L's and an AB. 
Now, uh, at the end here, it really doesn't matter which path you take as long as you get to Gygus. Um, this is the only area where there's any leniency as long as you're not backtracking or anything. Pausing there, it doesn't matter either. You can kind of bump and pause and stuff like that. Just don't do any wonky movements. So at the beginning of the battle here, uh, we want to do an ABB, Bash Pokey, Prey, Bash Gygus, which is default as Gygus. And then go to PSI with Poo, go down to Life Up Alpha, and then right right or left left Jeff and heal him. Alright, so he should be doing an Alpha. Ness should be getting hit for 93. Right when Jeff takes damage, stop mashing. And then Pooh has it says something about Pooh taking damage. You can mash on this particular text box, but that's more advanced, so I would avoid that. So right when Jeff takes damage, stop touching. And then even even for when he's getting hurt and collapsing, taking damage and collapsing, don't touch the the inputs because you will not smash. So uh, Nestle smash Pokey here. And uh, it's only those two text boxes that you don't mash on. You can mash everything else. And I would mash B and L again in case you overmash. So now there's several ways you can do this. You could do A, B, and I believe five Bs. But I do um, three right Bs and a B, which is 11 inputs. No, it's four Bs. So A, B, and four Bs. Or um, do three A, Bs, and a B. Go to Goods, Gutsy Bat, use it on Pokey. So again, three ABs or three right Bs and a B. And then next turn, we're going to do um, three ABs, a B, PSI, up to, um, what is it? Up to assist, and then up to paral paralysis, and then use it on pokey. And um, you could also, if you really, really wanted to, it's up to you. You could just do three ABs, and instead of going up to assist and then up to paralysis, you go down and then down. Hold on, dude. What? Sorry. Okay, anyway. Um, so again, 3 ABs, B, paralysis. Always doing the shortest amount of inputs. And this is an AB bash pokey. The next turn is bash pokey. And then on this last turn, you're doing 4 Bs, bash pokey, PSI freeze beta on pokey. Hold on. All right, so let's go ahead and fast forward. I'm almost done here. Um, so here you're going to bash PSI Freeze Alpha Mirror. And then you're going to do um, two ABs and then bash with both, po uh, with both Ness and Paula and then Freeze Alpha with Poo. Freeze Alpha with Pooh. And the next one is three ABs, Bash with Ness, Freeze Alpha with Paula, and Bash with Pooh. With the next turn, you can just, once you get to Paula and go into your PSI menu, you just mash A and L. See, right here I screwed up. So I know it's tw uh, nine inputs. I overmashed. So I did a B. Okay, I would be at seven. If I do one B, I would be at seven more inputs. Okay. So I would need to do um, three more Bs and an AB to fix that. And it took me a little while to fix this. And this is part of the reason why I didn't pass Serium. So then again, go PSI, freeze alpha, and then bash. No. I don't know. I don't know, dude. Sorry. All right, so again, three ABs. Freeze Alpha Bash. And this next turn we bash Prey, PSI, Freeze Beta. Prey is to advance RNG. And then this next turn we're going to bash and do two defendings, uh, two defends. So bash, defend, defend. Go to the next turn. All right, first turn we're going to, this is all defend, Prey, defend. Okay, first turn, defend, Prey, defend. Next turn is 1B, defend, Prey, defend. Alright, we're going to fast forward through this. 
And if there's defenses, 1B, defend, pray, defend. And I was doing slow inputs too, by the way. So I was so nervous about getting it. All right, so again, 1B, defend, pray, defend. Doing stuff, but where's the wheelbarrow, man? I need that shit. I'm moving all the piles out. Okay, so again, I'm gonna start. Okay, so zero B's for first turn, one B for turn two, one B for turn three, and then zero B's for turn four. Um, if you want, you can use the O here in pole star to know that you have zero B's. Sorry for the interruption. All right, so this next turn, um, so again, that's the zero B one. It's uh. Defend, pray, defend. So zero one one zero. I have to keep going over this again because I'm making sure that interruption didn't screw us up. Okay, now this from now from these next two turns, the the hundreds digit is how many times you hit B. So you're gonna hit two hundred something. So you want to do two Bs. Defend, pray, defend. And then the next one's three hundred something. You want to do three Bs. Defend, pray, defend. So I'll go ahead and fast forward to that. So two hundred twenty. 2Bs, defend, pray, defend. And then go again. After the LOM, it's 300 and something. 3Bs, defend, pray, defend. I would keep these jotted down and keep them with you while you're doing this because I even still do that. And now this one, you want to mash through here as fast as possible because there's moving NPCs. You don't want to advance the RNG too much because if you take too long, they'll move extra and then you'll screw up the manipulation. All right, so now, depending on how much damage he does, I believe 700 is 0, and 8 is 1B. So 700 damage should be 0. Yeah, see, 0, Bs. If it does 800, you do 1B, and defend, pray, defend. And then the next one here is Mom. All right. So if she does 16, 18, I believe that's the number. I've forgotten them by heart, so there should be three Bs here. Just make sure before I say it. Okay, that was three Bs. I, I do down B, so it's essentially the same thing. We're doing six inputs, I'm doing six, six inputs. Since B is two inputs, three Bs is six, etc. So 16, 18 is three Bs, then four Bs on the next turn. And then if it's 16, 52, I want to say, it's two Bs and then four Bs. Because uh, the 1652 is um, a seed that can have a clone. And it used to be 2 and 1. But sometimes the 1 would not work because you got the clone seed. But I made it to where if you do 2 and 4, you'll never hit that clone. You'll hit the clone seed, but you can always fix it. It's, it's fine. So 2 and 4 for 1650 some odd. 1618 is 3 and 4. And then, then you'll be done. So again, that's 4. Defend, pray, defend. What I'll normally do there for the four, since eight inputs, I'll do down B, down B, B. Eight inputs, defend, pray, defend. And then we're done. And uh, my time says uh, it's actually 48.16 here, but it was barely barely registered because I had split just late enough and started just er uh, early enough on the timer or something. So it was just barely world record. All right, so hopefully everything is clear here. Um, I'm pretty sure I cleared up any possible issues that that I'm aware of. Um, but yeah, if you're having issues with Sea of Eden, uh, the things I stated is the reason why. Um, turning too early on the first turn after um, passing the first Kraken, if the Kraken's to the right instead of above, that means you turn too early. And... Uh, if the third Kraken goes down and left instead of up and left, that means you also turned too early. And that's the only reason why that would happen. All right, and uh, we'll investigate Miss Saturn Valley later. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much. Hopefully I was pretty clear and concise and not too rushed. And sorry for the interruption. He was looking for a wheelbarrow. <laughs>